Testing. Okay, we're ready. Coach Fisher's here, and he has some remarks for us. We're good. Yep. Hello, everyone. Great to see y'all again. Uh, excited to be here. Just say, when once this starts, you know, uh, practice is getting ready to go. And uh, as much as coaches say, we all dread the beginning of the season. We love the beginning of the season and the newness and everything is coming to it. And uh, very excited about our football team in the fall. A lot of great new additions, a lot of older upperclassmen, I think, returning, and a lot of guys that were injured and banged up coming back. So I like the dynamic of our team, a little like spring football, and uh, looking forward to fall. Seems like we've had a very good summer, as I, I'm sure everybody has, but that's what we all say, right? Summer's going well, everything's going well. But like the dynamic of it, very excited for the team. A lot of challenges in a lot of ways, but uh, a lot of pieces to work with. So looking forward to the challenge. Questions? We'll start on the left back row. Dan Peck, ESPN 1067 in mm -hmm. Auburn. Coach, you mentioned the newness. One thing that seems new about college football is you have more quarterbacks transferring within the conference and competing for starting jobs immediately, including uh, Max Johnson coming from LSU, but also Zach Calzada yep. transferring to Auburn. What can you say about the way Zach performed when he stepped into the starting mm -hmm. role last year, and what is Auburn getting? Zach's uh, a tremendous in, young in man, very talented young man, has tremendous arm talent. Very competitive, very tough. As you saw, there was two games in the Alabama game, for instance, where he you know, got his knee banged up, he comes back in, leads us on a two-minute drive. Auburn game, he actually popped his shoulder back in place and finished that game. You're talking about a guy who has great character, great toughness, great ability to throw the football down the field. And, and I think just, you know, as he progresses, he's going to be a great player. And, you know, you hate to lose him. But, he, but, and, but you know, those decisions in today's world are different. But respect him very much and have tremendous – I love Zach. I think as a person, very smart, very intelligent, great human being. And I think Auburn's got a very good football player. Coach. Unfortunately, I've got to go against him. <laughs> but, no, it, I wish him nothing but the best of luck. He's a high-character, quality young man. Coach on the aisle third row. Coach, another question about Zach here. Just, I know he was with you guys, obviously, for a while before he got that opportunity. Mm -hmm. What did you see from him in terms of his development over, I guess, three years and change? And then you talked about going against him. How much are you looking forward to seeing him again and playing against him? Well, I mean, listen, early I think he was a guy who was very talented, and I think he realized what a quarterback was and the work he had to put in. And Because, listen, Zach's a very intelligent young man. You're going to, I mean, very intelligent. And he learns well, works hard, tough, competitive, like you say. And I can't say enough good things about him as a person. He really can't. And, you, I mean, you like going against him. I, it's kind of like when your old players and the guys you care for, it's tough. And it's not tough. It's tough to go against because you hate because, you know, you got when somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. But, listen, he's going to be a tremendous challenge. He's gonna have, I know he's going to be ready to play. He's going to want to play well against us. And he's very talented and, and uh, can lead Auburn, who has a great, great program and great team. So it's going to be a heck of a challenge. And, I, you know, he's proven he's a, he's a winner in this league. Left side, front row. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, let's talk about your quarterback room, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and the addition of Max. What is your team, or how does your team complement his play style, and how is he fitting in with y'all? Well, I think our, the one thing about that, our offense is very versatile. We've used mo mobile quarterback, we've used drop back quarterbacks. You go back to my history, probably more drop back guys than mobile guys, but we can use the mobile guys when we had Kellen and different guys, and even Matt Flynn when we were down there a little bit with Matt and some of the things he did. But I think Max is a uh, dynamic player. You're talking about a guy now. We talk about quarterback. He threw for 2,800 yards, threw 27 touchdowns, and had six picks. Those numbers are – I don't know if there's anybody in the league besides maybe Bryce and a couple others. I don't, maybe Bryce. I don't know if anybody has better numbers returning. I, I don't say that. I'm just going off the top of my head. But we're very capable. I mean, and played a whole SEC schedule, won games, brought guys back, big. He's like, and I'll tell you what he is. He's a much better athlete than people get. Think of him as a pocket guy, but he can run. He can run the football. He's a very big guy. So, And then for the room, I think – but Haynes King is a guy who – I played an outstanding game the first game last year for us. Very talented with arm talent, can run, throw, tough, and I and has looked very good, especially this some both those guys and then Connor Wegman, who I think was as good a player as a, as a quarterback as it was in the country coming out. His his fresh, you know, is a true freshman for us. So I think we're very dynamic in our room. I think we have a lot of ability, a lot of uh, different things that we're capable of doing, and you know, I'm anxious for the competition. And that and as you saw last year, to have depth at quarterback is critical, and I, and I think that's. There's room for – and that keeping quarterbacks now is hard. It really is. But I'll say this. It's where you walk out of the game getting ready for the NFL, not where you're at, you know, trying to hurry up and get there. And I think that's very critical in guys' development. Hopefully they can see that. But open competition, we'll see who wins and we'll see what happens. But I, it's, it's, I tell you what, I feel very blessed in, to have those three guys. Left side, front row. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Hopefully some levity for you. I saw one of your former quarterbacks, Marcus Randall, the other day. Oh, he's <laughs> awesome. Marcus. Marcus is doing a great job. I told him he's smarter than being a coach, but he's a real good coach. I told him he shouldn't go into coaching, but now he does a heck of a job. Marcus is a great guy. 
he, he said that the real Nick Saban Jimbo battles were on the practice field. What happened the other day, that was rated, <laughs> that was rated G compared to back then. Oh, said. we used to battle. I mean, compa- like, so I, listen, I'm going to say this. I have tremendous respect for Nick. There's, there's no, I have no problem with Nick. you got two competitive guys, and unfortunately, like you say, it, you get out in public and, and different things. We stood up, and, that, and it's over with. I have no problem with that. But we were at practice field. We were great competitors, and he was a great defensive coach, and we were establishing offensively, and we used to have tremendous battles. And we, had, we both had tremendous players on both sides of the ball. But they were, it was his team, and I was just the offensive coordinator. But, you know, it was fun, and, uh, you know, a lot of great respect for him. Right side, second row. T- Tyler Shaw with KBTX. Coach, um, at this point, what uh, position group are you the most confident in, and maybe which position group do you feel like still needs the most development? Well, I, I don't know if any of them you're totally coming, but I, I really felt in the spring I love the development of our offense and defensive lines. I really thought, which some of the, the hard times and things that we went through last year with injuries, like having to play a true freshman center like Bryce Foster, who'd never played center, and missed half of camp because of an injury. Playing Deuce Father as a freshman at right tackle in this league, blocking guys like Will Anderson and different guys that you go against. I mean, high-quality people, which were very tough things to do and all throughout the with all the other guys. But I think that really turns into a strength for us this year. I really do. With Layden, and I think Trey Zoom was the guy who would have played last year but was injured, had a tremendous spring. And then whoever we decided to left, you know, you got Moko and some of these other guys that are coming in to play at guard and the different things we have. I really think our offensive line took tremendous steps in the spring, and I really loved what I saw, the physicality, the size, the, but the knowledge, you know, and the things we did. I think the defensive line, I think there's some really – even though we lost a lot of players, I thought they really did a great job in the spring. And getting McKinley Jackson back this year, who played last year with a hurt shoulder the whole year, knowing he'd have surgery after the year, and getting him back fully healthy, I think, is a difference maker. Isaiah Rakes, Shamar Turner, moving him inside and doing those types of things, along with, and, and uh, different guys we have, to me, say, outside. Uh, Fidel Diggs, who I thought, man, jumped out at spring for us. I mean, once he got his opportunity, he was behind some really good guys, but we knew he was going to be a really good player and him jumping out. Anthony Lucas coming in early. And then plus all the other signees we have in that front group. I really, I really think those groups are excited. I think uh, I mean, we took some strides at receiver. I think we have to, you know, our passing game, we have to throw the ball better on offense. And I think that was accumulation of young linemen with – you know, starting a new quarterback and it got injured, Zach having to go in and, you know, getting fit, situated for a couple games, and all of a sudden he took off. Uh, and then uh, young receiver, we had some receivers hurt and what, and what we had to do. So I think getting that part back in, uh, you know, we have to have some tight end develop. Max Wright is a very good tight end coming back. Blake Smith, those guys. But then we have to get, develop some of those young guys. I'm very excited there. That, but there's some really talented guys. You know, Evan Stewart really come out and jumped out at us as a f- true freshman in camp that really, I think, brought some depth. And, you know, Moose Muhammad really made some gains last year. So I'm anxious to see how that, that part of it goes. But, uh, you know, I think all of them need development and more we go. But some of those young secondary guys, getting both corners, there's Miles Jones and Brian George and having to play all those freshmen. Tyreek Chappelle started all year as a freshman. Jalen Jones, you know, and his ability to be moved around and, and – you know, getting Brandon, Gil- Brandon Gilbert, and I mean, those guys back in there, some of those young freshmen. I'm anxious to see where they go to. There's a lot. This team's got me really excited, and there's so many quarterback battles. I mean, uh, competition battles going that quarterback, but other player. Everybody talks about the quarterback, but there are a lot of them across the board with very talented guys. And when you have talent, that's what creates greatness. And what I mean, daily on a basis, you have to create habits to play at a championship level where somebody takes your job. And this is one of the times I think we've got it across the board as much as we've had. Now, with some young guys in there, but it's exciting to have them. Front row on the right. Anthony Patterson with the Atlanta Boys. Coach, what is your biggest takeaway from last season, especially with the QB situation and having guys? That we ready overcame to some adversity. And the thing, you know, early we had some adversity with the quarterback situation, with the offensive line situation, receivers and corners, all like happened right at the beginning of the year. Bang, bang, bang. And we, played, we didn't play as well and lost some games, and we felt like we had a chance that we were right there to win. And then we played really well. And the disappointing thing was we didn't finish last year in the Ole Miss game and, and the LSU games, games that we could have won that were great games. They won the games. But we have to learn to finish. And I think the maturity that we'll gain from those situations I think will be critical. And uh, I think the experience with the line and some of the things, the physicality and the lines of scrimmage, I think that's where you're consistently coming. In this league, if you go back and really research, we talk about receivers and the big big plays have as much to do with in turnovers. But – the teams that are very sound in the line to scrimmage, offense and defensively, tend to have a lot of success in this league. And uh, I think I'm very excited. That's why it got me excited coming in this year. On the aisle, fourth row. 
everything. Hey, Coach Lyndon Blake, WBRC Birmingham. Nick Saban said he took the off-season dialogue between you guys as a chance to self-reflect, to become a better person and coach. Did you think the same thing? And if so, what did you take away from it? Same thing. I mean, listen, you, you, we get two competitive guys who have disagreement or opinions or whatever, and we both voice them publicly for the first time. Both of us have ever done that. And, you know, we both can grow from that. And hopefully we will. And, 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 but, you know, there's competitiveness, and I have great respect for Nick and, and his program and everything he's ever done. Left side. Actually, back. Been, we, we'd been very, very good friends for a long time. And that's who you fight with the most? <laughs> your brothers, <laughs> the people you're closest to? Coach, uh, Max's father, uh, Brad Johnson, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, mm -hmm. former Florida State Seminole, played for Coach Bowden. Uh, what, what's your relationship like with Brad? Have, have you? I've known him for years. But see, you understand, I used to hang, I was, when I was first becoming a coach, when I first played at, at Sanford in Salem and Sanford for Terry, I would go there practice. And I was down there a lot during their time. And I used to go to bowl games with them at times when I, and they would take me with them. I was learning to coach. They put me up in the room and I'd sit and listen to Coach Bowden game plan and call plays. And I was, and that was a big time when I was at Sanford and I was around Brad, Brad and Casey and Charlie Ward and that, and that whole crew of guys. And I know, I've known Brad since 1991, 1991, back when he played. So had a great relationship. He recruited Max and Jake even before I was at Florida State. Had at camps and have great. I think he's one of the great human beings. I mean, if you're ever around Brad, not only what he's achieved and what he's done, but man, he is a great guy. God fearing man, that does a great job with his family. He's a huge family guy and I have great respect for him. I've known him for many, many, many years. Right side in the aisle. Jimbo, what are your thoughts on the conference expansion and realignment? Just kind of the direction that college football seems to be. Well, heading? we're into it, and that's for sure. I mean. Uh, they're here to stay. Uh, I think, you know, the challenges is how do you schedule, how do you do things, what goes on. And because I think, and I think that's where the college football playoff has got to expand because of how big conferences become. Because I don't, I think it's, the bigger the conference comes, I think the harder it is to find a true champion sometimes because it's based off scheduling within your own league, what teams you play, strengths you play, you're not playing. In the old days, you played everybody. You know what I'm saying? Or almost everybody, so you had a better feel. So I think as these grow, I think the playoff has to expand to get true college football champion, in my opinion, because I think the leagues, you don't, you don't get a true gauge sometimes. Now, you all, generally you will, but there's going to be times you don't. And I think it's, it's a very challenging time, but I mean, you know, and you're trying to keep as many traditions, because I think that's what makes college football tremendous is the traditions that you have and the games you have. But some of those are going to have to go by the wayside a little bit, as much, maybe not because of scheduling issues, because I think one of the things, the challenges is making sure you play everybody and that the competitive balance to find out who the champion is, that there's an equal uh, distribution of the teams you play and how you play. And I think that's, that's going to be one of the huge challenges for us. But, you know, it's here to stay. Change is inevitable, folks. It's whether you embrace it or not. And you can sit here and be mad about it. You can sit here and throw, be up and down. And I'm a traditionalist. I, I love the histories of the games and the, all that stuff. But this is going to be here. So we have to embrace it. We have to change. And we have to be able to move on to adapt to, to be successful. Last two questions. First one right here. Um, you talked about your offensive line. One person I saw was Layden Robinson. Yes. What do you like from him? What, what do you expect out of him this year? The, the maturity, the confidence, the leadership. And then as a player, such a physical, tough guy who loves the game and is a total team guy. I mean, everything, the epitome of what you want as a leader and, and what you do as a team guy. But then a guy who loves everything that goes with football along with playing football. I think he's, I think he's going to set to have a great year be a great leader for us. Last question. Coach, so many uh, amazing coaches in this conference and in your division. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on Brian Kelly joining LSU. What do you know about him? And I've, I've played Brian twice in the past in games we had at Florida State when he was at Notre Dame, but I always had great respect. Brian's won everywhere he's been. He's been successful everywhere he's been at different levels. And at any rate, thing at different levels of football. And I think that takes a great mind at different programs, you know, power fives, not to power fives, to division two. To, I mean, that, that tells you his, his knowledge of the game and what he does. And I think he's one of the great coaches in college football. And he's, he's another, another great challenge you have in the SEC. But whoever's coaching all these teams are going to be very good coaches. So very challenging. Have great respect for Brian. Coach Fisher, thank you very much for your thank time. You good luck.